Hi, I'm Cordelia. I'm a concert pianist with two small sons, so I need time efficient practice. Every minute really has to count. So this is the series of practice tips and techniques and strategies that I use to make a proper difference in just 20 minutes. There are so many different ways of using staccato practice for a variety of situations, repertoire and specific technical problems. The most obvious use is for semi-quavers or demi-semis or any other running passages or fast finger work. Um, perhaps you're stumbling over some passages, um, there are unclear parts or weaker areas, or perhaps your fingers are just getting too tired. So virtuosic, brilliant passages that need extra strength and clarity will really benefit from this staccato practice method. Secondly, you could use it in places where you need a really even touch with absolutely no bumps or lumps. I'm thinking perhaps Bach, for example. Thirdly, quiet or delicate passages. For example, ornamental bits in Chopin nocturnes, uh, or anywhere you need a magical hushed effect. So it's extremely useful. I use some version of staccato practice on most of the pieces that I perform. I'm going to show you some of these examples later, but first, how exactly do you use this method and what are the benefits? I would divide the benefits of staccato work into two main areas. One, increasing your physical ease and lightness of touch, and two, making the passage artificially harder so that it eventually then seems easier. Practicing staccato is a great way to increase finger strength and independence. We normally think about the downward motion of the keys and the fingers, but this is actually only half the movement. The upward motion or the release of the note is just as important to think about. When you play staccato, you are working on both the downward and the upward parts of the movement. So more of the muscles are strengthened and this will help to avoid the notes blurring or sliding into one another. So number two, making it harder. This is one of the guiding principles of all my practice. You increase the difficulty of your practice in any way that you can think of in order that the end result then feels effortless. This applies to the mental side of playing, so memory and concentration, as well as the physical side. You'll find that playing staccato makes it much harder to be accurate because you're exaggerating the upward motion of each note. The placement of the following note is challenged. This means that if you can get it secure and accurate while staccato, then the normal version will be super easy in comparison. side, by shaking up how you practice a passage, you can disrupt your autopilot. If you're always playing a section the same way, your brain thinks, oh yeah, I know how to do this, I don't really need to concentrate. So then, if you come along and play everything staccato instead, your brain is forced out of its comfy habits and has to really keep up with what you're doing in real time and focus on each note as it passes. So this is a great way to test your concentration and your memory, and eventually this will guard you against irritating slips and mind blanks in performances. I've talked about how the staccato method can help your playing. I just need to point out a few things to be careful of if you're gonna try this. Um, the first thing is to make sure that the arm and shoulder and wrist and all the other areas of your body are not holding any tension. Um, it's easy to get caught up in focusing on the staccato and then not realise that there's a lot of tension held elsewhere. So just to check this, make sure that the wrist and arm are floppy and loose. Likewise, when you're playing the staccato way, we don't want a tense or hard or ugly sound. You know, technical work should not come at the expense 
of expression. So just continue to think about how you want it to sound, not just on the staccato. <laughs> Finally, make sure to counterbalance your staccato work with some smooth and beautiful playing afterwards. The risk of all that staccato work on the action is that you can end up with a slightly robotic or machine gun-like way of playing. So um, make sure to spend some time after you've finished your staccato work on enjoying releasing all of that effort and focusing on a beautiful shape and expression of the passage and finding a smooth accompaniment. I'm now going to show a few examples of how I've used this practice method in my recent repertoire. Firstly, Mozart's D minor Fantasia, which is mostly a slow piece, but there are a couple of semiquaver runs which need to sound totally smooth and melodic. So, under control, but not showing. Next, the left hand of Schubert's D958 finale, the C minor sonata. I wanted to get this left hand completely secure and strong so that I could then focus on the mood of fear and dread in the right hand, not be distracted by difficulties in the left hand. Finally, Scriabin's second sonata. In the first movement, there's a passage that needs a shimmering, magical effect in the right-hand semiquavers. I wanted a hazy, delicate touch, uh, yet also clear and shining, so kind of silvery, but also like cobwebs. like more practice ideas you can subscribe by clicking on my face here I think uh, and do share in the comments what you're practicing and how this method worked for you see you next time <laughs>